Hi, my name is Wildflower. I'm a accredited certified EFT practitioner and matrix re-imprinting practitioner. I support women and their partners to find peace after pregnancy loss. And I'm so thrilled today to have with me Sam Neffendorf, who is also an EFT practitioner and matrix re-imprinting practitioner to share his perspective as a partner uh, with pregnancy loss. And I'm gonna pass it over to Sam to expand. He's got more tools in his toolkit than what I've outlined. Okay, yeah, thanks very much. Uh, it's lovely to be here and I'm really excited about having this conversation with you today. So yes, I am an EFT and matrix re-imprinting practitioner and birth and parenting has been a big part of my journey, which you might not hear from so many men, but yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about some of that today. Uh, the other thing that I, the other major uh, tool you could call it is I am a meta consciousness practitioner and trainer and this is a it's an analytical process to actually help people to understand the root cause of health conditions so it's not a therapy or a, a, a coaching practice in its own right but it gives you amazing insights into emotional and psychological root causes of health conditions so that you can then uh, look at them holistically and be able to use, yeah, certainly tools like EFT, matrix re-imprinting, but also the whole story of nutrition, uh, physical changes, lifestyle changes, everything like that as well, including modern medicine, mainstream medicine, to have a fully holistic view of healing for people. Lovely. Lovely. Thanks, Sam. And I'll just Pleasure. share um, with our viewers that uh, we connected. We've just met. Um, there's Facebook pages and there's been posts uh, in the last few months uh, for uh, women looking for support after pregnancy loss. And I've posted uh, my website and I've noticed that Sam has posted too both times. And the first time he posted about his own experience, I reached out to him to see about sharing his story. And that's what this interview is all about. So Sam, um, what would you like to share about your experience with pregnancy loss? Right, okay, yes. So I have been, uh, we, uh, my partner and I have had uh, two pregnancy losses during our uh, journey, our parenting journey and they have of course been uh sad and difficult times but also some there was some real beauty that we found within them um after some time which i'll cover in a bit um it's a it's part of a wider uh birth and pregnancy story for me because i actually got into this work uh, when back in 2010, after we'd been trying to have uh, a baby for a while, I would I went and had some tests and I was found when I went to uh, go to the doctors, you know, you never think there's going to be anything wrong. But then he actually told me uh, very sympathetically, or it didn't feel sympathetically at the time, but he was a pretty good, good doctor. He, it was that there was... Um, something going on that meant it was very very hard for me to naturally conceive children which was something called anti-sperm antibodies which basically meant that it from the medical perspective uh my antibodies were attacking uh my sperm and making it hard for them to do what they needed to do so I was that was probably for me that was the biggest shock in fact that was the hardest part of the whole of everything and I after a few very down days I started looking into holistic therapies and I uh, went and I had a great acupuncture session and then the woman who uh, supported me with that put me in touch with another acupuncturist who was also a Chinese herb doctor because she thought that what he would be able to do would be more suitable for the particular condition that I was diagnosed with. So uh, 
you might hear some chickens around at the moment as chickens walking around if you're wondering what that is uh so um yeah so she so yeah i went to this excellent um chinese herbal medicine practitioner and acupuncturist and i did a three-month treatment plan with him and then at the end of that i was very excited also uh, started hearing about eft during this time as well and got curious about that uh, but yeah i went back to um the doctors i had another test fertility test and i was very disappointed to see that the um the same thing was still happening and so that was a real blow but the um actually the guy at the clinic the and this this all happened at the clinic rather than me going to my gp this time he went through the results with me and he said well actually look at this your um your sperm count has gone up through the roof your um the mobility's gone up the quality has gone up and so you're no longer considered to be uh sub fertile and so it although I still felt at that time, I felt a bit down about the result because it hadn't cured the thing that I was expecting. In fact, he then assured me that that might not be a problem anymore. And anyway, uh, one month after that, uh, we found out that uh, my wife was pregnant. And so that was an amazing outcome. And, at, by, and then during that time, I started training as an EFT practitioner, so that by the time my son was born, I was already working as an EFT practitioner alongside my job. And then, um, yeah, within a year after that, I actually pretty much left the job that I was in so I could spend more time being a dad and uh, enjoying being there while he grew up. So that was really, it, it, was, it was a beautiful um, part of things. Uh, then, yeah, so then after um, two or three years, um, my wife, Star, became pregnant again. And that was really exciting. You know, we were looking forward to, to this. And, uh, and it, it was also great to see that the, uh, the first one, I was well established in, in EFT, practice by then in fact i think it must have been four four years afterwards must must have been at least four years afterwards um and so it was great to see that my energy had remained clear uh the uh symptoms were clear i was still things were still going well and we were able to uh conceive children still so that was really exciting but what actually happened was this time there was a, the, we lost this pregnancy and uh, we found out on the 13, 12 or 13 week scan. And she, and what, it was a real shock because what we found out was that the, um, the baby hadn't made it past uh, six weeks. So there's a time when the heartbeat starts to be um, around six, seven weeks time the uh, baby's heart starts beating on its own. And it's, it is a very critical time uh, for the embryo and it hadn't happened, but the pregnancy had continued. So, you know, the longer the pregnancy continues, of course, the more emotionally attached and invested you are in what's going on. And, you know, that scan is a very exciting time when you're looking for uh, something uh, really enjoyable and, and something optimistic to happen and and it was i guess that was the hard now thinking of it uh that was the the biggest shock for me and the hardest bit just where my energy really went down seeing that there was nothing going on on the scan it was just a yeah just not really not much there it's very sad and so we left there um both devastated really and the other thing that happened as well was because it was a um the the miscarriage hadn't happened the pregnancy had continued uh there was it looked as though there was going to have to be a medical procedure that she was going to have to have uh so we then used 
we use tapping, if not that night, uh, the next day, it might even have been the very same night. Um, just to start the process, I'm not, you know, you don't, it's not like you just let go of these things all at once immediately, but it was just to start that process uh, together. And then, uh, yeah, and what, you know, on a physical level, there was a very good result, which was uh, she then was able to, well, the miscarriage happened naturally. Uh, still, you know, of course, not a nice experience. Uh, very upsetting and difficult for her, but I was there to support her, and um, yeah, and and it was and it was better than having a having to have an invasive medical procedure. Which yeah, it's great that you can have that if you need it, but we didn't we didn't on that occasion. And then we then um, yeah, and then I guess maybe yeah, but actually following that the next day we went and yeah we had a beautiful day it was there was um funnily enough wildflowers about everywhere and where we went and yeah we and so we spent some time among them and were yeah and, and that was a, it was there was a very beautiful sort of moment it was like i get is it is the word bittersweet for this sort of thing where you know we both were talking about it and didn't have any regrets over it, even though it was sad. It was like it still was an important thing for us um, that it had all happened. So that was, yeah, was, I'm feeling a bit emotional now talking about it, but it was, you know, there was some beauty in it, uh, even though it was sad as well. So, um, yeah, then, you know, gradually over time, life uh, went forward to uh, as it was and, Around a year later, uh, yeah, we were really excited uh, when Star uh, found out that she was pregnant again. So we then, um, and really, uh, just to cut it short, it well, I guess don't, there was some anxiety there. So she was experiencing anxiety and worry about uh, things happening. Um, and so it was a bit more tense than the time before. And it had, unfortunately, uh, exactly the same outcome as the time before where we went 13 week scan and um, yeah, and it was literally the same thing at some point between six and seven weeks, the uh, baby hadn't, the heartbeat hadn't started. And again, she'd held on to the pregnancy. And, um, and yeah, we did the same thing. But so still, again, she was able to, um, through, I guess the realization for Arta Scan, um, the sort of consciousness of that probably helped her body to start releasing as well. But also with tapping, we were able to um, support that. Um, but it was, you know, it was um, more emotionally draining, I think, uh, it was um, it was certainly more taxing on her to have gone through uh, to um, when you know your body is getting ready to have a baby for thirteen weeks. So there's a lot of hormonal changes, and then then the body coming back to uh, the non-pregnant uh, state uh, that, that's quite taxing. So it was you know emotionally taxing, physically taxing as well. And yeah, and, and although, and it wasn't, you know, we didn't have the same kind of beautiful emotional part of it like we had the time before. It was, it was a tougher one. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it, it happened and, you know, and our life did continue. There was more of a grieving process that time, which went on longer, uh, certainly for Star went on, and then I guess, it shows that the the process happens in its time, and you can facilitate um, being with the emotions and releasing things as at the right times. But you can't rush through any of it. Um, so often, tapping of these sorts of things is about be, it's giving you something to be with the emotions with, and like a little reminder that you're still there even in the the difficulty of what's happening. But then, yeah. So after about 
and I, and I think it was about a year to 18 months afterwards was a really tough time um, for us, um, especially for, for her. And it did, you know, and we kind of got used to this, um, that we were just going to have one child at this time. Um, and actually we were very grateful for that because of the story and how that, that had all happened. Um, but then we, we ended up moving to Spain, uh, which is where I am now. And we, and within about three months, after about three months of being here, uh, Star was pregnant again. And this time it was a, a happy outcome. So we've now got a, a three-year-old, uh, just coming up to three-year-old daughter as well. So it was, you know, it was a journey, but um, yeah, it was really, really beautiful. Um, and it's, and it kind of, and it felt like a, a very beautiful completion of that story for us. And it was very, there's so much about this birth, which was very, very healing um four star uh, and for me as well uh both births were home births uh, but the one in the first one uh with our son was very uh challenging uh it went on for 36 hours and even though he was born at home they did end up in hospital um through and probably did need to uh, at the end um after he was born um but that was the first two days was in hospital but this this birth the second one just went beautifully. It was all, um, yeah, it was, it was about six, seven hours long. Uh, Star was very empowered. The midwife was, did, did really excellent work in that she did virtually nothing, which is what a really good midwife should do. She was just there like as a peaceful presence in the room uh, while and, and doing the bits that she had to do, of course, but she was, you know, she's very experienced, um, done many, many home births around here. We had a pool, every, it all went really well. And yeah, and then uh, she was born um, and it, yeah, it was beautiful. And I guess that was very empowering for Star that she, she was able to, um, I guess, sort of, um, yeah, close the loops on the difficulties of the first birth. And also, um, you know, we, it, I don't know what everyone's spiritual beliefs are, but it felt like it was, this was the right time for the soul of the second uh, baby to come in. And like, and so it all felt like a really good, um, yeah, closing of the story there. Now there's one bit I didn't mention, which was also really interesting was, Around 36 weeks, um, this uh, baby was, we, we were of course planning this home birth, really excited about it, and found um, the midwife suspected that the baby was breech. So we then had to book a scan, very, very late for a scan. We wouldn't have normally done it, but it was essential if we were gonna be able to have the home birth, otherwise it would have to be a hospital birth, which wasn't, yeah, you know, if we had to, we had to, but it wasn't what we wanted. And, um, yeah, so we then um, using, uh, she did some pregnancy yoga with an excellent practitioner here. And uh, we also used matrix birth re-imprinting, uh, some of the techniques from that to, um, I was guide and I was able to guide uh, Star to have a look and go in and communicate with um, the baby and talk to her. And uh, what, you know, what she was able to do was, um, the story was that the baby communicated back was that she was trying to be as, because of the fears that Star had because of her previous pregnant pregnancies that hadn't worked out, she, the baby was staying as close to her as possible, head-wise. But then <laughs> we were able to, uh, yeah, like talk with her and, you know, and encourage her that, you know, she was safe now and uh, she'd done a great, you know, really great job of growing and all these things and that, that it was now safe for her to get ready to be born. And then she had turned around, which is, uh, which is really unusual at 36 weeks for that to be able to happen. So that was a really cool, 
really cool part of that story as well. So lovely. That's so lovely <laughs> to hear. Uh, I just, I, it just, it sounds like maybe a long journey, you know, from the first birth to, um, to your most recent one. Um, yes. And yet each step of the way, uh, I, I hear empowerment, you know, like allowing the miscarriages to happen naturally, uh, I imagine would have been empowering for both you and Star, um, both times, and then, and then turning um, your daughter, um, or having your daughter turn through uh, your, your involvement, your uh, facilitation with the tapping. Uh, yeah. It's just so, so empowering. And I, and I totally, um, yeah, I, I can see how the birth of your daughter really was kind of the bow on the package. It, it really kind of wrapped up those those previous difficulties and and griefs and losses and and now you have a daughter that's just so absolutely lovely. yeah yeah it was a long journey because uh there's six years between them and you know i guess in the the conventional sense of what we're told we're we're pretty old parents um so um my second one was born when um we were 43 and 42 but i i don't subscribe to that perception at all um that you know there have been many um babies born to uh parents much later than that and it's it's almost you know the beliefs are of course very important if you are um you know if, if with your health and everything that's going on so um that's i think it's important yeah people um choose is perhaps too strong a word here but people can be it's, it's great to have this optimism and perspective that things can happen and i've got a friend who was a oh wait she is a, she's also a fertility practitioner um uh, liz walton and she uh spent her entire 30s having ivf treatments um, she had five and nothing ever happened for her and so she um, but during that time she became an excellent NLP practitioner hypnotherapist journey practitioner um, subsequently to that she learned EFT uh, with me and she um, she's also now done the meta um, consciousness as well she's in Australia now but she <laughs> I remember um, she turned up at a, a meeting once looking uh, quite unwell. And, and she, she this, this when she was 47 years old and she told me that she was pregnant. And now, so she at 47 had her first and only naturally born, um, naturally conceived child after that huge journey that she had of five failed cycles of IVF. So she, was, she even made it into a national press in the UK with this story so it was quite an amazing situation for her yeah. that is amazing and i love i love um how involved tapping uh has been in in that story but also your story i i really i really love the um the way you stepped into parenting even when babe was in the womb through the miscarriages and and the birth you know in the turning um of yeah your, your daughter when she was breech uh it's just lovely lovely thank you for sharing yeah uh, yeah it's a pleasure and you know I, I i did actually get a bit emotional telling the story now uh but yeah it's it's kind of because it because it had such a happy outcome um it's it's a bit harder for me to connect how i felt back then uh, but yeah it is tough and i fully understand um and appreciate um that both parents go through really challenging times to this and it is it puts can put a strain on the relationship as well uh, many different types of strain as as both of you go through different at, are at different emotional sort of levels throughout as well um and yeah i guess um there's rightly there's there is um lots of good support for the women for the mums uh and there's there, there is it is improving for for the dads but there has has historically been much less because they've had to be you know all the things that society puts on men of the stiff upper lip stoicism and everything so 
uh, it's great. I think it's great that there is more um, support and consciousness that uh, the dads um, could do with a bit of support of through these things as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so lovely of you to share your story. And I also want to put it out there to the viewers. Uh, if anyone wants to reach Sam, how can they reach you if they want support from you uh, for uh, working through a pregnancy loss or, or uh, fertility? Yeah. It sounds like that's an area that you work into. Yeah, it's, I, I call that, I guess, my it's certainly yeah it's been so interesting throughout my life it's such a big part of it i have helped uh, a number of people with fertility and had some really excellent uh, outcomes and funnily enough it's not always been what they were working on for the <laughs> but it's just something that then happened for them when they weren't expecting so um yeah so yeah so how can people reach me Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you can email me, it's sam at eftnow.co.uk. My website, if you want to visit, is eftnow.co.uk. Uh, and I'm also on Facebook, Sam Neffendorf, uh, so people can uh, find me on there as well. Lovely, lovely. Is there anything else you want to add before we close, Sam? Uh, no, I think I've, I'm really, it was really delightful to be able to uh speak with you and share this story i really actually yeah enjoyed sharing that so thank you so much for inviting me for do for doing this and yeah i, I guess it's just that you know it, it can be a long journey and it and there are lots of potential ups and downs through it um but yeah, even if you feel like we thought that, okay, well, that's it. It's not going to happen now. Uh, we, if it does, it does. But um, it's, it's not, and the same with, with Liz, it's, it can be the, the letting go and the surrender to what is, is often a really key part of the healing. Um, and that doesn't just go for fertility, uh, pregnancy. You know, that goes for any uh, health uh, condition that you are, um trying to heal because within you know within all health conditions all symptoms it's not just about getting better physically the, your body is sending you unconscious messages of things that can actually make your life more beautiful and more in alignment with who you are and and you can learn some amazing lessons from your body when you when you learn to listen to it in that way that's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you so much for uh, taking the time. I so appreciate you sharing your story and enabling uh, us to get this story out there to women and their partners uh, in this important, really important uh, area. Thanks very much. It's been a real yeah. pleasure. Thanks. Bye.